Welcome back friends. Today I want to talk about ambiguity resolution in the Spring Framework. What happens when you have multiple beans of the same type? How do you qualify which one should be used? So I was recently watching a recording of Spring IO 2025 where Jurgen Holler went into this in depth. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below, but I learned a couple of things and I thought I would go ahead and share them with you. So we'll talk a little bit about the bean factory, what beans are, how to get out of bean, but mainly I wanna focus on like the injection points and how to qualify certain beans and some different tactics we have for doing so in the spring framework. So with that, uh, I'll head over to my screen here. I've got an application loaded up. It is a basic one that I went over to start.spring.io on, and it is using the latest version uh, at this time of the recording, which is 3.5.5. And all I did was pick the web dependency. So with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and move me off the screen so we can write some code. And we'll start here. So I wanna create a couple different types in this system. So what I'm gonna do is start with uh, a uh, interface here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Java class. We'll call this the payment processor, and this will be an interface, and it will simply have a uh, method called process. We're not gonna get too into the weeds here. Uh, that will give us that. Then I'm gonna create a couple different classes here. I'm going to create a credit card processor. Uh, this will implement the payment processor. Uh, we'll get a quick logger so we can just log something out and then we'll override the uh, process method here and we'll say log.info processing credit card number. That sounds good. So we have one type there and then we need another one. We'll come in here and create maybe a Venmo processor. And again, uh, this will implement the payment processor. We'll get an instance of the logger here. And then we'll go ahead and override process. And no, we are gonna process Venmo payment. Okay, so this is a good start. We have a single type here, which is payment processor. And we have two classes that implement that payment processor. So now if I have a payment controller, so let's go over and create a payment, payment controller. So this is a class, this is gonna be maybe a rest controller. Uh, and then maybe I have a logger here and I'll have a constructor. And in this constructor, um, I wanna go ahead and set a payment processor. So I might say private payment processor, payment processor. Now, we know that in Spring, I can ask for a dependency. I can say that this payment controller depends on some other class before it can work. Like it cannot work unless I have some type of payment processor. So we know that we can provide an argument here. So this uh, came a lot earlier, but this auto wired is no longer needed. Uh, this is implicit if you only have like a single constructor here, so we don't need to choose that. But if we have dependencies that are beans, then Spring will auto-wire them in for us. And the important note I got out of uh, Jurgen's talk is that each one is an injection point. So uh, if we asked for another bean in the system that we only had one of, it would just go ahead and inject it. But if we say that we want a payment processor and, processor and we ask for it, we see we get a little red squiggly here. And it says, hey, I cannot auto wire um, any payment processors in. So first off, we need to go ahead and make these components. So I am going to say component. And if I do that, this goes away. But if I go into my Venmo processor and now make this a component that Spring is going to manage, now I'm going to get a different error. Could not auto wire, there is more than one bean of payment type processor, right? So we need to qualify which processor, which payment processor we're actually talking about. One of the easy, easiest ways to do this is by using the at qualifier annotation. And this will take in a string value. What is the name of the bean you want me to use? So in this case, like a Venmo processor is gonna be a lowercase v, capital P. That name should go ahead and qualify. So processor, if we do that, everybody's happy, right? So that's one way of doing it. 
Now, another way of doing it is you could create your own um, qualifier. You could create your own annotations. And then you may see this in larger code bases uh, to kind of clean things up and separate things so that instead of just using the standard string qualifier, you could create your own qualifier and even go a step further and get some type safety out by like using something like an enum. So I'm gonna do that really quick. I'm gonna call this the payment processor qualifier. And this is going to look something like this. I don't think we need to watch me write, write code. And this again could be a string and then everything would work out fine. But maybe I wanna get some type safety out of this. So I might say payment uh, type. And then what I'll do is create an enum here called payment type. And we'll have an enum and this could be either a credit card or it could be Venmo, right? So now we get some type safety here. Now what I can do is I can go back to my payment controller. So let's go back over here. And instead of using the at qualifier annotation, I'll use our special annotation called payment processor qualifier. And now this takes a payment type, not a string. So I can say payment type dot credit card and the error here is cannot find bean with qualifier null. Oh, we need to go back to our credit card processor here and say this is that. And that should now satisfy that. And now we have a qualifier on the payment processor. So we could even bring in both of these if we wanted uh, because again, uh, the keyword here is this is an injection point. So if we wanted to say at payment processor qualifier, payment type dot Venmo, uh, and then we can say payment processor, payment processor to, sure, um, that'll work. And then uh, now we have that uh, other processor in here. So um, that is a way to use both the qualifier annotation and some specialized annotations basically based on the qualifier annotation to go ahead and qualify uh, that particular beam. Now, the one I want to talk about here that I learned in that video was there's another way to do this. So we can actually come in here and say payment processor. Now, again, uh, the way bean names are kind of derived is from Venmo processor. The bean name for this is actually going to be Venmo processor, right? So if we know that, we can actually name the same, uh, we can use the argument name here, the parameter name. If we name it the same as the bean name, then Spring will actually figure it out. So if I wanted to say that I wanted the Venmo processor, you see that I get no error there. It knows how to resolve that. And one of the things I learned here is by using the same name as a bean, you can optimize Spring's resolution algorithm, which is how it tries to figure out which one to use. So you'll get some optimization performance, you get some performance benefits here, right? So I like this approach now um, instead of using the at qualifier, but again, you're not gonna go rewrite entire code bases uh, to do this. Uh, maybe in certain situations you can optimize some things, but I think going forward, I really like this approach instead of having to use the uh, at qualifier annotation or um, some specialized version of that. Now, another thing I learned here is that we can go ahead and let's just create another uh, payment controller. And I'm gonna show you uh, an alternative to those things that we were doing before. So I'm gonna get a logger, I'm gonna create a constructor and instead of asking for a payment processor here, what I'm gonna ask for is an object provider of type payment processor. So um, uh, payment processor, let's just call it payment processor. So we get this object provider and if we look at the object provider here, this is a variant of the object factory designed specifically for injection points allowing for programmatic optionality and lenient, not unique handling. In a bean factory environment, every object provider obtained from the factory will be bound to its bean factory for a, spec a specific bean type, matching all provider calls against 
factory registered bean definitions. So for every bean we have in the application context here, we'll have an object provider with that type. Now, the nice thing about this is there's a bunch of methods on here. So we look at object provider, we can say, go ahead and get that object. Um, we can go ahead and get if it's available. Maybe we wanna check if it's available first. We can get if it's unique. We can do a whole bunch of other things on it. There's an iterator, there's a stream. So I want to return a sequential stream over all matching object instances. So this is pretty nice. Maybe I wanted to find out like how many payment processes I had in the system. I can go ahead and stream and say for each payment processor, I want to go ahead and log something out. There's the payment processor. Uh, let's just call this payment processor. And let's do this PP and there. So now, uh, if I were to go ahead and run this, so let's try and run this application. And now we should see down here, we see two payment processors, right? So we have the credit card payment processor and the Venmo processor. So the object provider is just another way to kind of get at it, uh, some of these beans. And it gives you some programmatic ways of like dealing with optionality and, hey, I want to stream them or I want to get an ordered list of them. Uh, just thought that was pretty cool. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the object provider. And so finally, I think I just want to show off, again, the things that we're talking about here all really have to do with kind of the bean factory, right? Uh, so let's say bean controller. And uh, let's just make this a rest controller. Again, we'll get a logger. Or we'll key, create a constructor. Uh, constructor. There we go. And one thing I can ask for here is the bean factory. So the bean factory comes from org spring framework beans factory. We'll call this the bean factory. And this gives me some access to the raw bean factory. So I can say bean factory dot get bean. And I could give it a name. So I could say like Venmo processor processor, right? Now, if I do this, uh, this is actually going to get me a object back. Uh, and that may not be what I want. Like I want the actual type back, right? And uh, so let's do this. And then uh, there's an overloaded method of this get bean where you supply it a type and you say that I want a type of credit card processor. Uh, so let's say that, oops, uh, we wanted the Venmo processor, there we go. And let's say dot var, and now we get a Venmo processor back so we can easily um, do some things with that. So we could, uh, we can also say, hey, Bean Factory, is this a singleton? We can pass that in, that will return us something. And then you can go ahead and just kind of output the uh, contents of that. So that's the Bean Factory. Again, a whole bunch of useful methods in the Bean Factory. Check that out. And I just want to close on this because you probably, you might have seen some demos do this in the past. And I just want to talk about why this is now, because if you go into here and you ask for the application context, you see you get a configurable application context. So if you dig into this, uh, this extends the application context. You see there's a listable bean factory, right? So this should start sounding some alarms. Hey, I know what that bean factory is that listable bean factory extends the bean factory that we were just working with. So there are a whole bunch of methods in some of those classes that are useful to you. Uh, again, you can come in here and say, all right, application context, uh, whoops, not that one. Uh, go ahead and get a bean. So I wanna get a bean. Uh, we can do the same thing we did before, right? And get the Venmo processor. Uh, we can ask the application context, is this a singleton? And we can ask that. And then we can even do things like, hey, application context got bean definition names, uh, which returns a string array of de uh, bean definition names. So we could easily say, hey, give me all the bean definition names. 
Um, I didn't create a logger, so let's go ahead and do that. Log uh, logger. Okay. Now I can say log.info, bean definition name, sure. And now we can go ahead and rerun this. And at the end, we'll just see a whole bunch of bean definition names out. These are all the beans in your application. Again, remember some of which you are contributing to, a lot of which underneath the hood, because this is a web application, there's a lot of things going on under the hood for the web app to work. Uh, so a lot of these are, are web-related beans that Spring uh, has created and put into the application context for you. So I, I know that was a lot. I, I just thought uh, I learned a couple of new things and I thought I'd share them with you. I thought it was fun to kind of go through this exercise, kind of revisit the um, application context and talk about the bean factory and hey, what happens when I have multiple types of the same beans? Some different ways that we can resolve that um, or, or qualify it using the at qualifier, a specialized version of the at qualifier annotation. Now I know that you can give it the same name as the bean name and Spring will automatically resolve that for us. Uh, with some performance benefits. So uh, I found that to be very interesting. And the object provider that came in Spring Framework 6.2 is new to me. Uh, so it was interesting to learn about that. So I hope you learned something new today. That's always the goal. I just have some code that I kind of throw together and then, hey, what's the best way to like show you something cool? I hope you learned something new today because I surely did. So thank you, Mr. Jurgen Haller. Uh, for that breakdown, and uh, that was a lot of fun. If you did learn something new today, do me a favor, friends. Leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.